Hey guys, so in today's video we're going to be going over the different kinds of equipment needed for dog powered sports. Welcome back. Um, I know it's been a little while. We actually have been really busy with work lately and we've been putting in a lot of hours. So we haven't really had time to make a video. Um, I know it's been two, it's, we've missed two out on two videos so far. So this is kind of our redemption video. So we're going to go ahead and show you the basics of uh, taking the dogs for a walk, like the kind of equipment that you need to use, um, and also kind of elaborate from there on some different points. So, and to kind of add to that too, it's it's not just taking them for a walk, it's teaching them to pull, getting them geared up and trained so that when you want to go bike joring or scooter joring or even add that your dog onto a team, that they have just some of the basic general knowledge needed to do that. Yep. So, the first thing I recommend doing, obviously, if you have a young dog, teach them to walk on a leash. That's usually the first step and the first goal, which... You know, we can touch that on that a little bit later. A lot of the stuff that you're going to teach your dog is usually going to be from the ground and then onto a bike. So before I kind of get into like all the equipment and how to use it and all that, one thing I want to add is that when you first start out, especially introducing a bike or a new piece of equipment, you know, don't just throw it on and go. Um, start slow. A lot of times the dogs have to get used to it, especially if it's like a bike. So when Shy was you know, probably about a year or so, I introduced her to the bike and we would go on short runs um, with her next to it, never pulling me in front because I wanted her to learn how to respect it basically. You know, I didn't want her cutting in front of the wheel. I wanted her to realize that if it goes too fast and you run in front or you stop, you can get injured. Um, so that was kind of the first thing was just desensitizing her and kind of introducing her in, um, to the equipment itself. Another good thing to do too, is supervise them but you can also have them wear some of the stuff like the harnesses and stuff and you can have them wear it around the house um just helps them get comfortable wearing certain things that they're not used to wearing so just to add to that too i never leave anything on the dogs you can see shy doesn't wear a collar in the house and this is because she in particular has been notorious for chewing and eating her own collars and definitely if you left a harness on her she would chew it um, and I just don't want her to swallow any of those pieces because it could be quite pricey as far as trying to surgically remove any of that if it gets stuck. Yeah, it's so, dangerous. Yeah, uh, definitely don't leave anything especially like a harness collars I think I feel like for most dogs are generally okay um, but there could be some potential um, health hazards to wearing a collar inside. It's just personal preference. All right, so to get started with that, um, when I first started actually teaching Shai to run in front of the bike and pull it, um, I started mostly on foot first. Um, so I didn't even take the, anything with wheels. So most of the time when you're training any sort of animal, you start from the ground and work your way up. There's a basic setup that you can use um, and we, we'll show you that now. So the first thing I got her was just a very basic harness like I showed you here um, for any pet store. Um, this allows her to pull without pulling, you know, straining her neck or causing her to collapse her trachea. It doesn't choke her in any way. And this allows like her to, to just pull freely without any constraint. Which is different than a slip blade, which or any will color. end up keeping staying tight the more she pulls. So naturally she just pulls so she wasn't too hard to to train to pull but for some dogs what you end up doing is you kind of like run with them and let them kind of go in front of you and actually kind of develop this this technique of them running in front and in a little pulling that's the key um, once you have that down then i did transfer her to the bike since she was already familiar with that and basically just took everything that she learned from the ground into the bike so I had her on this for a long time. Um, but the thing I noticed, it, the reason why I didn't keep just doing it with this and I actually got a specialty harness was because if she was a little bit off center 
or we'd be turning sometimes, this harness would slip to one side. Just like the uh, backpack kind of idea. Right. So I didn't, I didn't want her to develop any sort of back injury or pull a muscle in her back because it was taught one way or the other. And so the good thing with, with harnesses that are made specifically for pulling breeds and pulling um, sports is that they don't really allow for that. You can see this goes all the way down her back. So it allows for a very even like weight distribution for her to pull. Um, and it allows her to use her body properly to pull, which is good. And there's also no clips or any other kind of attachment. You can see this one's kind of apart right now, but and it's held in, it's held together by two different clips. And the which, X back. Which those can break over time too, especially if the dogs are really pulling. So this is just a lot more secure. There are other types of harnesses that are designed for pulling as well. One in particular is called Urban Trail Harness. That's generally a lot of times used for bike drawing or scooter drawing. Um, so that is another option too that you can get as well. It works just as well as this harness. And some people actually use it to take their dogs hiking. So it's more versatile than, than this pulling harness here. So probably down the road we will get her one of those. But for now, this harness works perfectly great for what we're doing with her. Pat's going to show you how to put the harness on Shia or on your dog. Now this one doesn't have clips so it actually slides over the head and if we can get Shia in the correct position so you can see a little bit better. Okay. So her head goes kind of through the two biggest holes. And then her legs actually have to slip through each side. Sometimes it can be rather confusing of which which part of the dog goes where. It but took me go. it took me forever to get used to this harness because I was so used to the clip ones, and this one is a little different style because you don't just wrap it around her and then clip it in. It's you put her through it. Yeah. So. And I grew up with horses, so. Trying, you know, putting halters on definitely helped prepare me for this, so I kind of was able to figure it out a little bit more easily. Um, so yeah, you can see here the harness goes all the way down to basically the base of her tail. It's nice and it's nice and tight, but it's not cutting off any circulation. Yeah. And you can see when you put a little pressure, this is where your your line's going to be when you hook up to her. When you put a little pressure on it, it's nice and tight throughout, and it doesn't leave any gaps or anything that would be uncomfortable for a dog. Now he's going to show you how to put the mushing belt on. So this belt's pretty simple. You just put it around you like you would a normal belt. It's nice and padded so it doesn't hurt your back while you're getting pulled. So what you do is you just wrap it around, take this little thing, cord, I don't know what you would call it, strap, strap. tighten it around yourself. Then there's these two buckles. It's very similar to the coupler in a way, but what you do is it clips on one side of your belt and then you clip it on the other side. There's two rings in the front. And what this does is it, it distributes the, the uh, tension from the line as you're pulling. And instead of being one center line right in the center, which actually ends up putting a lot of pressure right in the center of your back, it actually changes it to the side so when it pulls, it doesn't just pull tight on your back here, but it kind of spreads it out throughout your lower back, which makes it a lot more comfortable to wear. So then from there, all you have to do is take your toe line, hook it up to yourself. And um, also for future reference too, if you have um, more than one or two dogs, so you have like a, a three dog line, then that, become, that call, is called a gang line. Because you have a gang of dogs, and they're on the line. Mm -hmm. I don't know, that's how I associate it. I'm not sure if that's the reasoning behind the name of it, but that's how I associate it. So, and then from there, you just clip it on the end of her, and there you go. You're all set. So that's for just your basic groundwork or can across setup. Um, we also do attach this line to the, to the bike as well. Um, we usually, this coupler has dual purposes, so I can either use it to um, basically make an attachment on the front of the bike um, to attach this line to, 
or I can use it to attach my two dogs here. Normally what I do when I have two dogs on each line, instead of attaching them at the collar, which some people do and it works for most, most dogs, but Harrison has a tendency to like to slip out of his collar. Um, so I, it's probably not conventional, but this is what I do, it's worked for us, is that I usually attach this coupler to each of these um, lines like this so that you still have control. You, can, you don't have one dog going way over here and another dog going way over there. Um, it still keeps them together. And but it keeps them at to a certain distance. You yeah, know, it's it, nice. it prevents Harrison from slipping out because when he slips out of his collar, then it's fair game. He can go wherever he wants, you know, within reason of this, of course. So yeah, there you have it. There's the basic setup for bike drawing or can across or whatever kind of activities you want to be doing with your dogs outside. All right, well, there you have it. So we're actually going to go ahead and take Shia out today. Um, the rain's kind of let up a little bit, so we're going to take her out on a little run, and you guys can come along with us and see how it looks. Oh!